I will tell you a little bit about uh, textual analysis and uh, methods of distant reading, specifically uh, stylometry, which is um, the expertise of our team. Um, for those of you who have only now heard about it, um, a little bit of introduction. Uh, stylometry is directly related to uh, the phenomenon of distant reading, uh, which is a trend within literary studies um, dedicated to uh, analysis of uh, bigger collections of work, um, either this or uh, using external information, not directly just what we see in the text, but also including metadata, uh, research literature, uh, trying to find some patterns in the, in the text, uh, trying to uh, see what is less distinguishable uh, to a human eye uh, and to close reading at what can be um, and providing this uh, this kind of analysis that's uh, enriched with additional uh, information. Uh, stylometry specifically um, has in fact been uh, in operation since uh, since quite a few centuries, even though it's been formalized only in, uh, in the 20th century. Uh, it's based on the observation that if we look closely at the small features uh, of language uh, as preserved in the text, uh, we can observe uh, certain patterns that uh, uh, that go beyond uh, the content uh, and, the, for example, uh, specific offers tend to use specific uh, uh, specific pronouns, adverbs, um, sorry, uh, articles and so on in a very specific way, which allows us to uh, to detect those um, their own stylistic, uh, stylistic uh, footprints in a way uh, between uh, the texts. Uh, and um, this comes from the very basic assumption that we can treat a text as a bag of words. Uh, and this is also related uh, to um, a very important finding by uh, George Zipf um, about the distribution of words in a language. Uh, Zipf's law doesn't relate just to language. It actually refers to many phenomena uh, in the universe. Uh, but what he observed in terms of language was that uh, we use the most frequent words uh, uh, the very simple uh, repeti repetitive words such as uh to, and, or, of, and so on, uh, a lot of times in the sentence, in the whole text, and so on, whereas uh, words which we uh, consider to be specific to us to, sh to carry the style are in fact fairly rare and, uh, and do not carry that much meaning when it comes to, mm, when it comes to, uh, uh, when it comes to the ratio of, uh, of these words in the text. Uh, and in fact, uh, this observation uh, is related uh, to the assumption that people don't like to make an effort. Uh, we like to keep things simple. When we communicate, we don't think uh, specifically about uh, choosing fancy words. We think about passing the message. Uh, of course, sometimes we write de deliberately, and uh, and then we want to use, um, uh, then we want to shape our um, our uh, message in a more uh, intentional way. But most of the time, we just want to pass the communicate and uh, don't think much about the words that we choose. Uh, raising from this assumption, uh, a couple of scholars, uh, even before Zip, uh, without knowing uh, what he would discover, intuitively tried uh, to do this in 19th century, uh, but it wasn't until uh, 60s and uh, a famous study by Mosteller and Wallace uh, related to the Federalist Papers, um, that, um, that the discovery that grammatical words can be strong predictors of a Fourier style uh, is important for, uh, for literary studies. Uh, what most Oren Walls did in their study was uh, look at Federalist Papers, uh, which is a collection of uh, essays written by uh, American forefathers, uh, and they tried to establish the authorship of um, 13 of uh, 13 letters that were of doubted uh, of um, that were anonymous, not signed by any of the forefathers. Um, who actually, which one of them actually wrote them? Uh, they managed to do this by comparing uh, how they used uh, certain uh, grammatical words. Uh, and from this day on, this has become a, a more and more popular uh, approach in, uh, in this kind of studies. Uh, especially with the uh, with the um, coming uh, to power of powerful computers that allowed us to uh, carry such compu computations uh, more rapidly, um, this has been a fast developing field. Uh, so you may ask, 
but how can we actually uh, work with this um, if we don't necessarily want to examine just authorship and we are not sitting on a pile of anonymous uh, uh, short stories books uh, that we want to uh, examine. Uh, stylometry in fact comes useful uh, in many, many cases. Uh, of course, authorship studies are the most uh, prominent in a way um, that it's always nice to have an anonymous text that was unknown, um, uh, whose offer was unknown for um, a thousand years or so, and suddenly we can, we can determine who wrote this text. But uh, in fact, they come in useful when it comes to uh, many applications of uh, corpora exploration. Uh, what stylometry allows us to do is to detect similarities between specific offers, uh, but also to trace a chronology of the text uh, uh, created by one author or by a couple of offers. So we can actually see that uh, these differences that we would uh, assume that happened that uh, people in uh, in the first half of 19th century would write slightly differently than uh, in the second half of 19th century uh, become very visible when we uh, when we look at uh, changes of the use of grammatical words uh, we can also examine cross and intergenre relationships uh, this uh, relates not only to grammatical word studies, but also to examining sentence length, uh, word length, and all kinds of uh, specific cha um, uh, changes uh, that occur on the cross-section of genres. Uh, we can also study idiolects, uh, which uh, which is actually a very interesting study, when we, um, a very interesting application. If we think about, uh, for example, uh, looking at um, how characters of specific genders are. Uh, are uh, stylized by authors in various uh, novels. Uh, we can also look at style transfer and uh, and see whether an author who tries to imitate somebody else is successful or uh, tries to uh, or, or still uh, is visible underneath it all as himself or herself. Uh, when it comes to authorship investigations, uh, it becomes very useful both for the attribution of the of the um, uh, doubted out authorship, but also to the verification if even our uh, our data set of potential candidate offers is correct. Because very often we're looking for an offer of uh, uh, of uh, of an anonymous uh, text from let's say 15th century, but we have no idea if the pool of candidates that we have is even valid, or maybe it's just a shot in the blind. Uh, showing you some potential uh, applications that um, that I've been involved with. Uh, one such study, ongoing study, is uh, is a collaboration with colleagues from Jagiellonian University and Potsdam University, uh, where uh, we are trying to examine a big co um, collection of American drama, a corpus that uh, right now uh, counts around 3,000 uh, plays written between uh, the end of uh, the end of 18th century and contemporary times, and um, and this is the kind of collection that's very hard to uh, get get deeply into unless uh, you have some kind of uh, some kind of automatic help and um, this is a, a screenshot of a network analysis created on the basis of stylometric information which allowed us to uh, notice um, the most distinguishable uh, clusters of texts, uh, so the strong, most uh, strongly connected groups of texts uh, as detected uh, in this corpus. Uh, different colors mark, in fact, uh, those subgroupings within the within the big structure. Uh, and uh, once we started to dive into what uh, what was detected as similar, we could observe that, for example, a group of texts would be a, a, a group of translations uh, from French to English, or maybe a group of translations from German to English. And you would think that um, that it shouldn't be that visible uh, that this is a translation, but actually um, some specific expressions, some specific grammar structures would still be preserved uh, with this kind of uh, even with this kind of translation. Uh, this then allowed us to uh, look further into and deeper into specific subgroups and uh, and uh, carry out both uh, quantitative and close uh, close reading analysis of these texts. Um, for authorship attribution, an interesting case uh, that I worked on um, uh, recently was uh, a 12th century per uh, Persian Qasida, which is a poetic form um, that was preserved only in two manuscripts uh, and, uh, and uh, was of anonymous authorship up to recently. And my colleague Alexi Kashmatulin from uh, Institute of Oriental Studies of Russian Academy of Sciences had a theory that uh, of, on who might be the author, and we carried, carried out 
about a number of texts uh, which allowed us to uh, to determine with a certain uh, degree of con uh, confidence uh, that uh, the author would be uh, Amir Muizzi. Um, here you have two types of analysis uh, being both uh, cluster hierarchical uh, analysis here in the network form uh, in the right uh, top part of the of the slide and on the bottom uh, sequential analysis which is in fact uh, an analysis of uh, of oral influences of particular uh, candidate offers uh, throughout the duration of the text so you can actually not only work on a huge collection of text but you can just focus on one text and see uh, how it um, how the influences within it uh, change and uh, where are the potential potential uh, authorial takeovers or uh, or impersonations of somebody else's style? Uh, well, now the question might be: It's all nice, but uh, how can we do it? Because uh, it's a lot of visualizations, it's a lot of data, but it sounds uh, quite mysterious. Uh, it is a fairly complicated procedure, but uh, luckily for uh, all of us who don't want to uh, run uh, very long uh, codes uh, in a number of scripts all the time, uh, there are at least two uh, solutions, uh, and in fact quite many more, uh, that uh, take care of this. Stylometry is basically um, basically consists of three to four steps. Uh, first, we need a corpus of text, like with any kind of uh, uh, literary studies. Uh, this corpus can be maybe not one text uh, in this particular case, but it can be three or four texts. It can be uh, five million texts. Uh, all depends on uh, your computing power uh, or availability of resources. Uh, you need a distance measure to calculate uh, the differences between the texts based on the features that you can extract from them. You need a, some kind of classification algorithm. And uh, whereas distance measures are uh, d d designed specifically for the needs of literary studies, because the ones uh, popularly used in um, uh, in natural sciences are not that good when it comes to applying them to language. Uh, classification algorithms are just any classification algorithms used uh, used in computational studies. Uh, finally, it's nice to have some kind of visualization because uh, if we want to engage uh, other scholars who are not necessarily uh, comfortable with working with uh, huge tables of data. Uh, visualization allows us to uh, simplify uh, some discoveries that we made and uh, and better present them. Like in this case, uh, we can see instinctively that the network structure would give us uh, would give us some kind of uh, strong groupings, and we can intuitively guess that uh, that something that's closely connected uh, is probably more similar than something that's uh, that has very loose connections. Uh, the, the tool that we are developing at our institute um, is called Stylo, and maybe some of you have heard of it, uh, but a tool that was built by Clarin that's, um, that's in fact uh, uh, probably more accessible, definitely more accessible to many uh, of the beginners uh, is Websty. And Websty um, offers all of these, uh, all of these steps uh, within its online application. So you in fact don't even have to install anything locally. You don't have to write a single line of code. Uh, you just have to uh, read the buttons and, and click them properly and you obtain uh, exactly the kind of analysis that you would have with other kinds of uh, other kinds of um, uh, programs. Uh, this is another example of uh, of the visualization uh, this time obtained with Websty, uh, giving you a hierarchical clustering analysis, uh, a kind of tree structure that again is fairly easy to read because you can see that texts detected to be similar are placed on the same branch, uh, text by the same author are marked with the same color. Uh, so in fact, examining relations between particular authors becomes fairly straightforward once you once you understand these two facts. Um, a little bit more about Websty while we don't have time to uh, to have a quick run through. Uh, uh, it was developed by Polish Clarin, uh, as I mentioned, uh, and it is fully web based. Uh, one huge advantage that it also has is that it offers advanced linguistic parsing. Uh, whereas in stylometry, we mostly focus on uh, examining of just uh, 
word forms. And uh, there have been many studies now uh, looking into usefulness of particular features, uh, be it combinations of words, uh, the so-called engrams of two, three, four words, uh, or uh, particular combinations of characters. Uh, there have been studies uh, looking into lemmas or, uh, or uh, using just adjectives or just nouns or just verbs. Um, this is usually not done uh, on, a, on a common basis because uh, because word forms are still most uh, most uh, useful and most reliable when it comes to detecting authorship and most of types of um, style factors. However, if you are interested uh, in comparing texts uh, for the use of specific grammar parts, uh, let's say how particular authors use nouns or how they use verbs or uh, whether they prefer certain grammatical forms, uh, with tools such as Webster you can actually examine this because uh, this kind of linguistic parsing happens happens uh, already within the application. And finally, encouraging you to take a look for yourself if you feel like this might be uh, uh, something of use and you would like to try this kind of analysis. Uh, WebC is available both uh, specifically for Polish and for other languages uh, with all, all these extensive parsing uh, factors uh, under the first link. The second link uh, is uh, our, uh, our research group page, which includes uh, a number of uh, tutorials and uh, references on how to learn particular methods uh, uh, within stylometry. So I encourage you to take a look and thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.